Welcome to this guide on how to set up your grow room. If you've already tried growing plants hydroponically, setting up a grow room might be the next step for you. But the process might seem complicated and overwhelming, especially if you don't know where to start. That's why we're here to help. The good news is that setting up a grow room can be simple and affordable, or you can choose to invest in a more efficient and convenient setup. The best part is that every decision is yours to make, from choosing the actual room to selecting the grow lights that you want to use. In this video, we'll guide you through every step of setting up your grow room, from the basic to the more advanced options. There are essentially five steps to setting up a grow room. Step one, find a suitable space. Step two, choose how to configure your space. Step three, make your space light tight. Step four, get good light coverage with your grow lights. And step five, set up a ventilation system. Step one, find a suitable space for your setup. When setting up your grow room, the first thing to consider is finding a suitable space for your setup. This can be any space in your home, from a spare room to a cupboard, as long as it meets certain requirements. The first requirement is having enough space for your setup. Consider the size of your plants and how much space they'll need to grow. You also need to consider the amount of equipment you'll be using and ensure that you have enough space for everything. Another important consideration is electricity. You'll need power for your grow lights, water pumps and other equipment so you need to ensure that you have access to a couple of normal double wall sockets. If necessary, you can use an extension lead to provide additional power. Water is another essential consideration. Ideally, you want to use filtered or distilled water in your hydroponic system. You can either install a reverse osmosis filtering system to filter your tap water or purchase filtered water or distilled water. You'll need to top up your water in your reservoir from time to time and change it completely every two to three weeks, so consider how easy it is to get water into your grow room. Noise is another factor to consider. Lights, pumps and fans can produce some noise, so keep this in mind when setting up your grow room and ensure that noise won't disturb you. When it comes to flooring, avoid using carpeting in your grow room because it can hold moisture, house bugs and bacteria. Concrete floors are commonly used in grow rooms because they are cheap and easy to clean. You can also cover your floors with water-resistant materials such as cementitious urethane or pond liner to make it easy to clean and protect against spills. Step 2. Choosing how to configure your space. When it comes to configuring your space, you'll need to consider the types of plants you want to grow and the amount of space that they'll need. You'll also need to think about how much light your plants will need and how you'll provide adequate ventilation. Keep in mind that you'll need enough space to move around and work comfortably and that your plants will need enough room to grow without being overcrowded. A grow tent is a great option if you're looking for a more controlled environment and it can be easier to set up than a whole room. They come in a variety of sizes, so you can choose one that fits your space and your needs. With a grow tent, you can control the temperature, humidity and airflow, and you can use reflective materials to maximize light coverage. If you decide to convert a whole room, you'll need to make sure it's completely light tight. This means covering all windows and vents and using lightproof materials on the walls, floors and ceilings. You'll also need to install a ventilation system to keep the air circulating and prevent mold and mildew. Converting an enclosed space like a cupboard or closet can be a good option if you have limited space. However, keep in mind that you'll need to find a way to provide adequate light and ventilation, and you'll need to make sure that the heat generated by your grow lights doesn't damage your plants. You may also need to use reflective materials to maximize light coverage. Step 3. Making your space light tight. The success of your hydroponic plants depends on a proper lighting schedule, and to achieve that, you must create a light, tight environment. This ensures that your plants receive the right amount of light, and natural light doesn't interfere with the lighting cycle of your grow room. If there are any windows or natural light sources in your grow room, you need to block them off or cover them with total blackout reflective sheeting to prevent light from escaping. Ideally, paint the walls white or cover them with reflective sheeting. Although reflective sheeting is more expensive, it does two great things. It prevents light from escaping and blocks natural light from entering your setup, which can interfere with your lighting cycle. There are different types of reflective sheeting, like Orca or Reflex Diamond, but the shinier the sheeting, the better. Alternatively, you can paint the walls white with flat white paint, which can reflect up to 85% of the light that hits it. Look for the light reflectance value, or LRV rating, on cans of paint to choose the best one. 
Remember, creating a light, tight space is crucial for the success of your hydroponic cultivation. Step four, get good coverage with grow lights. When growing plants indoors, it is essential to match the natural sunlight requirements of the plants, and this can be achieved through the use of grow lights. While outdoor gardens require about eight hours of direct sunlight per day, hydroponic gardens need at least 14 to 16 hours of artificial light, followed by eight to 10 hours of darkness. Choosing the right grow lights can be challenging given the many options available on the market. Choosing the right grow light depends on the size of the hydroponic garden and the type of plants being grown. Compact fluorescent grow lights are suitable for small spaces, while T5 fluorescent grow lights and metal halide grow lights are ideal for larger spaces. LED grow lights are versatile and can be used in small or large spaces. It's essential to research and compare the different grow light options to determine the most efficient and cost-effective choice. Step 5. Set up a ventilation system. Ventilation is a crucial part of indoor growing, and a proper ventilation system will ensure that your plants grow well and produce high yields. Without adequate ventilation, the CO2 levels will decrease and temperature and humidity will increase, pests and insects may start to appear. The first reason why your grow room needs a ventilation system is to maintain optimal CO2 levels. Plants need carbon dioxide to thrive, and if they're kept in a closed environment without fresh outside air, the CO2 will soon run out. A proper ventilation system will ensure that there is a continuous flow of air between the outside and your indoor growing area, maintaining the perfect CO2 level for your plants. This will help boost their growth and increase yield. The second reason is to manage the heat in your grow room. Different plants grow best in different temperatures, and when you grow indoors, plants will get heat from grow lights, but they won't have a chance to cool down if there's no wind or air circulation. Also, some grow lights produce more heat than others. Having a ventilation system in place will help extract warm, stale air and bring in cool, fresh air that your plants need to grow and thrive. The third reason is to manage humidity in your grow room. Plants expire water vapor all day long, and if they grow inside, the humidity can rise rapidly, attracting pests and insects. High humidity is also not good for most plants unless they are a tropical species. A proper ventilation system will help control humidity by dumping out stale air and bringing in fresh air from the outside. The fourth reason is pest control. Stagnant and humid air has a negative impact on all surfaces in your grow room especially the growing medium. In high humidity, the growing medium will remain damp and humid, attracting fungi, mold, mildew, and pests. A ventilation system will help control humidity and therefore will reduce the risk of fungi, mold, mildew, and pests. Fans maintaining a breeze in your grow room will make it more difficult for pests to reach your plants. To ventilate your grow room, you need an exhaust fan to remove old air and an oscillating fan for air circulation inside the grow room. Additionally, you'll need an opening for bringing in fresh air, which could be a hole or an open window, but it should have a net to keep away bugs and filter out large particles. So, while there are a number of factors to consider when setting up an indoor grow space, once mastered, you'll have the perfect controlled environment in which to grow plants hydroponically. If you like what you just saw, go ahead and click the link in the description to find a full detailed article on this video's topic. And if you learned something new today, hit that like button and let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more hydroponics educational content and visit proponics.co.uk for in-depth articles on all things hydroponics. Grow smarter with proponics. And until next time, happy growing.